of the 31 Days of Howling Beasts. I am your host, Gary Hill, for this one. And um, I'm doing a film tonight. It's, it's a British film. I, when I say tonight, it's probably a night for you UK people. Which is appropriate, because this is a UK film. I'm uh, recording this kind of late. I got, I got kind of sick yesterday, so... Got behind on everything. But I am doing... Don't worry, I'm doing well now. <laughs> but I am doing Blood Beast from Outer Space. A.K.A. The Nightcaller. A.K.A. Nightcall from Outer Space from 1965. Uh, it is directed by John Gilling, who um <clears throat> gave us some Hammer stuff, uh, including... Plague of the Zombies, which is a, a probably a big one that everybody knows. Uh, probably some of my favorite looking zombies of all time are in that movie. Just s- sunken eyes and terrifying and yeah. Uh, screenplay by Jim O'Connolly, who um, uh, did, did some good directing stuff. He directed the Valley of, Guang- Valley of Guangi. Uh, if you know what that is, that's, that's one of those big dinosaur films um, I, I happen to enjoy. And, uh, ch- check that out. Check out Valley Gwangi. It's a great film, too. Uh, based on a novel by Frank Crisp. Uh, this feels like a, a film that's based on a novel, and I'll tell you why. Um, it's basically about, because I'm not going to read the IMDb thing, because it just gives everything away that you'd want to know in, like, one sentence. And that's, that's bullshit. So, whoever wrote this, uh, this synopsis, go fuck yourself. <laughs> but, um... It's about this orb that is uh, this object that falls from space, and uh, doctors find it. It's a, like a silicon-based, like small thing. It's about the size of it looks like the size of a basketball, and um, they're baffled by it because um, at the space at the, the the rate it was giving off uh, radio radioactive uh, things with the guy counters, and not now it's not doing anything. It responds to sound like a uh, I think that Steven Spielberg saw when he made this, this when he made stuff like this when he made uh, or did research like this when he made Close Encounters with the idea of this, uh, the alien being attracted by sound and uh, it turns out this orb is not an orb at all uh, it, it, it is a, a being inside the orb that wakes up uh, kills one of our scientists and uh, escapes promptly to go Abduct, abduct abduct women for its own its own means and I the cat meows I apologize but I forgot to tell you stars of this film uh, we have the great John Saxon and in one of those early early roles I mean he's he's like clean cut man as Doctor Jack Costain uh, Maurice Denham as as uh, Doctor Morley you may know him from. Do, 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 do. All the voices in the original Animal Farm uh, animated film from 1954. So if you've seen that, shows up in Days of the ja- Day of the Jackal. It shows up in some some good stuff here, and uh, check him out. Uh, more notably, Patricia Haynes, who plays Do- Doctor and Barlow. It's not in there and in the credits, but fancy that a smart female protagonist in, in a 1960s movie because she she plays the role pretty well. She was the original Emma Peel on, on the Avengers, not not that Avengers people, but the the British one with Patrick McNee and secret agents or whatnot. Uh, other noble character actors: Aubrey Morris uh, plays Thornburn, who's the sleazy uh, bookstore owner who's uh, harboring our alien, if you will, uh, basically being his connection. <laughs> um, Aubrey Morris. Shows up most. He's in a lot of things. But he shows up most notably as Mister Deltoid in my in uh, Clockwork Orange. But he's in The Wicker Man. He's in. He's in tons of stuff. You just gotta you recognize that that sleazy face. And you almost hear uh, Mister Deltoid say, "Yes, yes." He was in Life Force, of course. Uh, ch- ch- check him out, man. Uh, Aubrey Morris has been a uh, been a gem in, in many many things. Just to be that sleazy. You know, he almost has to look like he's guilty. And that's kind of what I love about that character actor. Um, But the meat and potatoes of it is, the thing escapes. Uh, It has a moment with our lady lady, uh, scientist. So she hears a noise. You know, she she sees a, a clawed hand come out of the door to try to grab her. She 
promptly closes and locks the door once again, you know, because once, once, you know, the white folks hear a noise, they got to go open a locked door and see what's going on. Because she's seen a, a glowing light emitting from the door, and of course she's very curious. She, uh, but the thing, the thing um, is not, not to be found, the orb is not to be found, so of course she's set up to be a typical, you know, patsy to say, hey, it's just a woman, she's talking about crazy things. Might be that time of the month, they don't say that in the movie, you know, but pretty much 1965, and there's Duchess talking to us, it's fine though. Uh, saying that kind of stuff, but anyway, uh, one of our, our good doctor, Dr. J- Jack, uh, notices a foot out the window that is not of this earth. It looks like a lizard foot, and this gets his suspicions up until the thing promptly es- escapes. <laughs> All of a sudden, it's one of those things where it's one of those things where it, it uh, magically knows how to drive because it steals a car and blasts its way out. And then uh, this film does a thing where it fast forwards a few weeks. You find out that over 200 women have been, you know, mysteriously d- disappeared. They've been either kidnapped. They don't know what's going on. They're just not around anymore. And they find out that it's all linked to this uh, this racy this racy bikini magazine that had uh, uh, ad in, in, in the want ads in the back looking for nubile young women. And, um... That, that, you know, blah, 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 blah. You know, they're looking for women to, to be models. And 200 women apparently uh, respond to this call and are, are visited by a tall, a tall dark stranger with a, a, a scarf over his face. And they are abducted, you know, given the, uh, this is like a police procedural at this point a little bit. Because they're given stories by eyewitnesses, by i.e. the parents of one of the girls. And then it's all linked back to this bookstore. That, that I mentioned that Aubrey Morris is running and he's, you know, basically the middleman for the, for this, this alien who, who's taken these women for some undisclosed reason. It gives the reason in the end. I don't want to give away, you know, usually these sci-fi films have like the weird, you know, Mars needs women just, just to like ch- change them into really beautiful beings that are aboard a ship or whatever you want to call it. This is for a much more scientific reason and a very, I'm not going to say a just reason, I don't, I don't change, kidding if women is just, but it's, it's very, very smart. Uh, the biggest crime this film has is that for a film called Blood Beast from Outer Space, or Nightcrawler from Outer Space, it's got a giant claw attacking a woman on the front of the, on the, front of the poster with, a, with, with army tanks and spaceships up in the corner over here, UFOs invade Earth. Space creatures snack girls snack snack snatch girls to a mysterious planet. That is the, the the thing's intention, but for for the reasons, it's it's something had had to do with a, with a failed experiment that happened a hundred years ago, and but the biggest crime this film has is it's got this big poster, and it gives you a lot of expectations that this is a monster movie, and it's not really a monster movie. It's more about this one alien's mission. To, to to find, you know, what it failed to do or what its race of people failed to do all those years ago, which has basically made them imperfect. So it needs these women to experiment on and blah, blah, blah. Don't want to give a reason why, but there's a reveal at the end. Uh, you're very surprised how the, what the end looks like and explains why he looks the way he looks like. But it's Blood Beast from Outer Space. There's not a lot of information about the making of this movie. Just uh, just to let you know that it was well received by people, and I I could see why because it's very it's very smart. So for an hour and twenty five minutes, I'd say you'll be entertained. But if you're looking for a monster movie, do not look for it in Blood Beast from Outer Space because you're just not going to get it. And that that's I'm not even going to call that a shame. I just, I just you know you have other films for for stuff like this, but this one. Another thing it kind of abruptly ends, but not really, you know. <clears throat> but um, yeah, not a not, not a, a super high recommend on your list, but it's a five point five on your IMDb. Um, give it a watch for the cheesy theme music, and the very solid plot of this film that 
from the poster, from the title, should be a, a, a hamburger with extra cheese because, but but it's not. It's it's a very surprising watch, and I think you guys will dig it. That's Blood Beast from Outer Space. I will uh, include the YouTube link and and the uh, to watch this uh, film. This 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 very serviceable film <laughs> on there. Uh, but yeah, we'll, we'll check you guys all again. And day eight of the thirty one days of Howling Beasts, uh, which will include a review from our man R. J. McCready, who's doing the nineteen seventy seven TV movie. Winter Beast, starring Bo Svensson, uh, who you may know from many, many genre films, Yvette Mimieu from uh, The Time Machine, and some other goodies. And um, there's somebody else of note. Oh, R- Rance Howard's in that movie. It, it's, 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 a, it's full of 1970s people that you may know. He gives us a fine review of that film. And uh, I think you guys are all going to dig it. I know I did. I listened to all these, you know, before. Pretty much right when I get them. So, for, first first and foremost, thank you to my podcasting brothers and sisters for contributing to this. And, you know, keep me entertained. I hope they're doing that for you, too. But like I said, Snow Beast, 